For months in 2009, Lenny Peterson farmed around a washout that had developed in his Lemoore, North Dakota cornfield. But when his son got the sprayer stuck in the two-foot-deep gully that summer, Peterson asked permission of the local Natural Resources Conservation Service to smooth the edges. Peterson said he was told the edges could be smoothed as long as the washout's original depth didn't change. A local NRCS representative stopped by the Peterson farm to check their progress. The official would later disagree in court about the message he delivered that day. I asked him if we could go finish, and he goes, as I said, I saw you doing nothing wrong. So they went out and finished, and then, of course, the people who turned us in, they heard about this, so they called the state. <laughs> That's when the fun began. <laughs> Peterson is referring to the six-year legal battle which followed the arrival of a letter that fall, accusing Peterson and his wife Patty of swamp busting, or improperly draining a wetland. Swamp busters are ineligible for farm program payments. The Petersons would ultimately tie up nearly half a million dollars in the battle and face more than one sleepless night. It's quite a hair-pulling ordeal to go through. It's a good thing, $7 corn. All my neighbors are buying land, tractors, and machinery. I was paying lawyers. <laughs> and the water would come in right down. NRCS officials came to the Peterson farm in December 2009 to determine whether he had violated the swamp buster rule. Peterson found agents digging holes in their recently seeded winter wheat. Worried about his crop, he asked the NRCS officials to leave. And that was a mistake then, too. Then I got another big certified letter from FSA to pay back all this money. To get the government payments, you have to sign a form that allows them access to your field 24-7, 365 days a year. He soon found himself sitting before the Lemoore County Farm Service Agency Committee, a group made up of his fellow producers. The committee voted to restore Peterson's eligibility for farm program benefits in early 2010, but was overruled by the state FSA office a month later. Additional appeals and government decisions went against the Petersons. After losing at lower administrative levels, the Petersons decided to skip directly to the National Appeals Division. As decisions in 2011 and 12 failed to go their way, the Petersons were becoming overwhelmed with legal fees and repayment of tens of thousands of dollars in past crop subsidy payments. Lenny and Patty hit a low point and debated selling the farm. <laughs> there were a lot of conversations. They were kind of one-sided. They were her conversations about giving up, about me being bullheaded, me being stubborn. Are you? Oh, yeah. In 2013, the Petersons sued the NRCS, and the case was eventually heard in Fargo. A few weeks after the hearing, Lenny Peterson was in the field when his lawyer called to tell him the judge's ruling. We're combining the beans, me and the wife will never forget that. And phone rang and I got told it. And <laughs> well, I just grabbed the radio and told her we're going to go out and get bleeping drunk tonight. And, and uh, yeah, it was really good, really good news. Despite winning the day, the ordeal was far from over. The Petersons struggled for weeks to get the government to return the lost subsidies. They were also soon notified that the NRCS had pushed the case to the Eighth Circuit Court of Appeals in St. Louis. But in early 2015, the NRCS dismissed the appeal just before the court date. If they took it to the Eighth Circuit and lost, this ruling would have went for all the states in the Eighth Circuit. In the meantime, Mary Podol had taken over as North Dakota's state conservationist. So my first day on the job here in North Dakota was meeting producers in the Red River and uh, the eastern part of North Dakota who were angry and frustrated. Everything was being appealed, and a lot of things were being managed through lawyers. 
Once the dust had settled, Podol stopped by the Peterson farm. He really got the feeling it had become personal to some, some people, and I don't disagree with that. There were some within the agency that had just kind of taken on a whole anti-farmer, if you drain, if, if you manipulate wetlands, you're just bad, and that's not our place. That's not our role to judge. Yeah, I was a little leery at first talking to her. We had quite interesting talks, and uh, I give her a lot of credit, and I thanked her for stopping here and listening. By 2013, the agency had reorganized compliance teams nationwide, and Podol pushed North Dakota's NRCS officials to bring an open mind to their farm visits. It was more, that's a farmer, oh my goodness, you know, they're gonna come in and they're complaining. You listen to a farmer and they say, I farmed this for 30 years, and you can honestly say, you know, I can see what you're saying here. The Petersons were eventually repaid most of the money they had tied up in the battle with USDA. I had to go to a meeting in uh, way up northwest North Dakota and tell about this whole deal. And one guy in the crowd said, so it paid to be bullheaded and stubborn. And I said, no, it still cost me 150000 so it didn't pay. <laughs> I won. I got my point across. And that was the main thing. It was the principle. For Market to Market, I'm Colleen Bradford-Krantz.